the next big acquisition I had was 264 units, College Manor, above ground swimming pool right here on Southwest 2nd Avenue across from Tiger Hall. And a broker approached me, about a local broker, one I knew. And there was a gentleman named Harold Z, who was 82 years old at the time, had a portfolio of 4,000 units, and was attempting to sell. And this was uh, early 82, which if you knew there was a little bit of a recession going on then, was not the best time to sell, but his health was such that he wanted to sell and, and settle up his estate. And he actually passed away a couple years ago, I mean a couple years thereafter at 84. And Mr. Zieg was a very, Mr. Zieg was a gentleman in the oldest, most traditional sense of the word. I, I was honored to know him and, and, to, uh, and to meet him. And he made me an incredible deal. This was a $4 million asset, which worth easily uh, probably $30 million today, 25, 30. And he basically said, Nathan, you get 75% bank financing. I'll give you a 25% second mortgage. Hallelujah. Nothing down. I'm in heaven. There are problems with this community. Uh, I mean, it had shag carpeting. It had brown paneling on the hallway walls. It had 40-watt bulbs in hallways that needed, you know, 100-watt bulbs. I mean, and it had, it was built at two different times. They had literally had two management offices back-to-back, -back, you know, one on 2nd Avenue and one on 1st. They, they ran them separate. I mean, I could, I was in, the, the Target, I was, had so many things I could do to that place. I was just itching to get in there and fix it because it needed fixing. Uh, and so I, will, I, was, I had 90 days to go get my financing and, and give them a letter. I'd like due diligence period, et cetera. So I charged on down to Barnett Bank, who was my banker at the time. I said, wow, have I got this deal. And they looked at me and they said, Nathan, that violates about seven different banking regulations. Okay, we're not supposed to allow 100% down deals. You're supposed to have so many down payment, et cetera. Sorry, Nathan, we can't do that. There's just too many exceptions to it. <clears throat> okay, so but there's competition in the world. I went over to First Union, and I said, have I got a deal? And I said, Nathan, we can do this deal. And I got, First Union is organized, or that these, both these banks have been acquired by other banks by now. Barnett Bank was famous as Florida's bank, and they truly had local authority. The local bank truly had a very high signature amount. They didn't have to go to corporate headquarters. They could literally say yes or no at this level. I didn't realize this at the time, and it's always important when you're doing negotiation to find out who has the power to say yes, and the person you're talking to and asking for things can actually say yes to you, because they can't say yes, you're really kind of wasting your time. Anyway, it turned out that First Union at this time was organized differently. They had three levels. They had local, they had Jacksonville, and then they had Charlotte, and everybody had to say yes. Well, the local guys said yes pretty right away. They wanted the business. Hey, we get our bonuses. Um, and eventually, pretty fast, Jacksonville said yes as well. Up it goes to Charlotte, who was looking at this thing and saying, what are these nuts doing? Nothing down? Who is this guy that we're giving away our money to? But, you know, everybody likes to play the internal game. Nobody likes to say no to your people. Nobody likes to say you're stupid. Uh, everybody wants to, you know, hey, we're team players. So they started death by a thousand cuts. They just started asking question after question after question. And from my point of view, tick tock, tick tock, my clock is running out of time, you know. And <clears throat> Mr. Zieg followed this process very closely. Mr. Zieg called me once or twice a week. I will tell you, after a while, taking Mr. Zig's calls was one of the most emotionally difficult things I ever did because I didn't have good news for him. And he would, you know, every time I'd tell him, he said, well, okay, when are you going to know? And I'd give him a date, and he'd call back the next day. But I told, I, this was, this was, I mean, this was back in the days of pink slips. This was pre-cell phones. This was when answer machines were just coming out. I mean, this was back in the dark ages. Uh, but I always took his call, and I always immediately returned his call. I still remember the time I got, went, got back in the office about 4.30 one day, and I'd had very bad news. And there that pink slip was on my desk. And I took a heavy sigh. And I'm like, oh, I, it's late enough. I can call him back in the morning. I call him back in the morning. But I always returned his call, and I was always honest with him. 
and I've been in my life where I know I've been working with good people who have good intentions, but they keep dodging me until they can give me the perfect answer they want to give me. And while their intentions are good, it really does not build credibility because people want to know what's going on and they really want clear communication. So I remember my 90 days expired on the 31st of December. And I wanted this so bad. I wanted this so bad. But about December 21st, I kind of gave up on First Union. And Bob Cameron was my loan officer at Barnett Bank. And if I put together every dime I had, if I shook out the cushions, I had a quarter of a million bucks. 1982, this was a lot of money. Uh, right now, it's pocket change for bonus for a hedge fund guy. Uh, probably about one day's bonus on Wall Street. But to me, back then, it was every dime I had. I mean, I was flat broke thereafter. And I didn't want to give it up because I wanted to put a lot of money into this place. But it was every dime I had. So I called up Barnett Bank. Bob Cameron said, Bob, what if I put a quarter million dollars down? I don't have a million dollars, and you know I don't have a million dollars for 25% down. Well, yeah, take a quarter million bucks. He said, Nathan, I think I can do it. Let me try. On December 21st. And he got his committee together, and he got verbal approval on the 23rd. And on December 24th, he went around everybody's house and got their signatures. And on December 26th, I got to call up Harold and said, Harold, I got it. And I, I um, didn't mention that. I, I got my dates a little bit wrong. I got one 30-day extension. It was supposed to expire November 30th. Mr. Z gave me one 30-day extension to the end of the year. And I think the only reason he gave me that 30-day, because he said, Nathan, I got somebody else who buy this place out of Chicago. He's out of Chicago. They'll give me $100,000 more. But I'll give you, so th I'll give you 30 days, but that's it, OK? And I don't think if I and had not returned his phone calls, I don't think I would have gotten that 30 days. So we turned around and got the loan, and we closed it <coughs> on uh, the 30, 30 days, which is also pretty good, uh, of, of January. And I'll tell you kind of another story. That was a five-year loan. Commercial bank, they don't make super long loans. And, and uh, uh, hilariously enough, uh, when this thing came up, uh, CMBO's clo uh, you know, uh, collateralized mortgage-backed obligations are kind of now, but they took off for about a decade or 10 days or 15 years. Well, I, I did the very first uh, CMBO in Gainesville, the very first one, and I did it on College Manor. <clears throat> Up to that time, most things were either commercial bank, life insurance, or pension fund. Um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mae had not really gotten into the industry in big time, and CMBO's had just started. This is where they you know, they, they collect a bunch of mortgages and sell them off as a bond. And so, um, uh, uh, once again, I ended up going to First Union. I forget why I went to First Union. And said, will you do this deal as a CMBO? And you know what? Now, I was dealing with the Capital Markets Department, which is very separate from the commercial, okay? Same damn thing happened again. Okay? They messed around and they messed around. And finally, on the, January 7th, because my deadline now was January 30th, because that's why I closed the first five-year loan, I turned around and I went back to Barnett, who is by now, uh, they're, if not right then, they became Bank of America. If I'm keeping my bank straight, I may have got them mixed up. But anyway, I went back and I took all, I mean, you have all these third-party reports, engineering reports, appraisal surveys, et cetera. And I say, will you accept the ones I did for First Union? And they closed that loan in 21 days. It was incredible. Okay? They just moved faster. Uh, don't ask me why. It, it happened twice, but it happened twice. 